All right, thanks everyone for joining another free training Friday. Um, go ahead and uh, raise your hand uh, just so you can make sure that you can hear me. Um, just give me a little acknowledgement there. You should have a little hand raised, a uh, little button there that you can click on just to make sure everybody can hear me, okay? There we go, thank you. All right, thanks everybody for doing that for me. Um, this is another episode of Free Training Friday, and we're going to be going over the conflict of interest checker, obviously a very important feature uh, in the system. Um, I do see some familiar names. Thanks for uh, coming back and joining us again. I see some new names, too, so welcome. Um, as you've probably noticed, you're muted. Uh, that's by design. I wouldn't want everybody uh, shouting out questions. So um, if you have any questions, just utilize that chat box there in your GoToMedia window. Um, and we'll review those at the end. I have my colleague Kaylee on as well. Um, she's another organizer, and she's going to be reading those questions off to me when we get towards the end. Um, everybody should be able to see my screen now. Uh, and where we're focusing, like I said, is on that conflict of interest checker. Now, on your top toolbar, uh, where my little mouse is hovering there, you should see a button that just says conflicts. Okay? And really what a conflict checker is, is it's kind of like a glorified search tool, right? Uh, we're punching in a name. Uh, and we're searching across our databases to see if we have any hits on that name. So I'm going to run one just real quick, okay, so you can see how the basic functionality is done. Uh, all you're going to do inside of this window in that field where it says enter last name, you're going to go ahead and type in a name, and you're going to hit enter. Okay, notice it takes that name and it pushes it down to the defined names list. It does this because I can actually add multiple names if I need to. Okay, Smith, Adams, Jones. I can build this list out with multiple names, so that way any time I need to run it in the future, I won't have to re-add them, okay? It automatically is going to pull up my list for me every time, okay? So once I get the last names into this list as I want them, I can click Run up here in the top right corner. And what that's going to do is open up my conflict check hit list, okay? This is going to give you kind of some, uh, kind of like some high-level uh, data of where these potential hits um, live within your databases, okay? You can see I've got a couple hits on Adams here, quite a few hits on Jones, and quite a few hits on Smith, okay? So the first thing it's going to show you is obviously the name column, okay? And then we have the data column which is going to show you the item where it actually found the hit, okay? So, for instance, on this first one, the name that it found was Adams, and it found it in this text, Adams v. British, right? Here's Jones. It found it in the Jones v. Pepsi text, okay? And then as you scroll down, as you move over here to some of these other columns, you get uh, some more information. Like, for instance, the field column. This is telling you the field in that record where it found that hit, okay? So Adams was found in the matters name field, okay? Adams here was found in the last name field, okay? So it's showing you where it found that hit. Now, if you have any in here that you want to disregard or you want to remove, you can always click the check boxes, okay, and delete them out. And if you want to open up, any one of these hits to get a more detailed look at that record, just double click on it, okay? Once you double click on one of these hits, it's going to pull up a snapshot of that record that it found the hit on, okay? So, for instance, that first one was a matter, okay? That's why it found the atoms inside of the matter name, okay? And then it also shows some other information. So, if we're looking for um, a contact, for instance, Jones, if I double click on Jones here, this is going to open up a snapshot of Jones's name record. So this happens to be Bobby Jones. Uh, here's the person's address, 123 Street. So I can look at this and I can make my determination at that point, is this the conflict, you know, that, uh, or the potential conflict that I'm looking for, okay? If you don't find a conflict, or let's say you do, and you just want to, you know, log that, that you either didn't find one or you did, there is a print option, okay? You can print this list of hits and then link that to your case, okay? Remember, each one of your cases that you have 
let's see here, let me just pull this up real quick. Each case that you have has a docs tab. That is a great place to link those conflict of interest checks. That way, in the future, if you need to go back and verify, hey, did we run this conflict check for this case, you can go quickly to that docs tab and you'll see that it's linked right there. If you need any help with linking documents or things like that, please check out the help guide. Okay, that will give you a, a rundown of how to do that. So again, just a quick recap. The conflict of interest checker, that's our conflict button up there at the top. We type in our last name, we hit enter. We can do additional names if we need to. Hit enter and then click run. When we click run, that's going to pull up our hit list and then of course we can double click on any of these and see more detail. Okay. Now, you can do some other things here too within this conflict of interest checker. For instance, load names. If you have a whole list of names uh, and you click this load names button, see how it brings the last names that I entered back into the queue so I don't have to retype them. Um, this is obviously very handy if you have you know, 15, 20 different names uh, that you're running on a regular basis. You don't need to keep typing those out. You can just click load names and whatever names you had in there from your previous search, that's what's going to go in. Okay. If you had any hits, if you print it out, that hit report, and you click load hits, it's actually just going to pull up the hit list for you. Okay, so keep that in mind too. There are some setup options here. Now, the, one of the questions I always get on our training, uh, you know, that we do for clients, is what databases does the conflict of interest checker actually search? And I will just tell you, out of the box, by default, the Abacus Law Conflict Checker, by default, searches the matter name field, okay, so the name of your case. It also searches the notes fields, okay, within those cases or, um, and, and names. And it, by default, searches the last name field of your name records, okay. So those three areas. You can actually add to that if you want to dive a little deeper or search a little deeper throughout your database. You can go into this setup option here, and you can add more conflict search defaults, okay? Here's the two that I mentioned uh, earlier, the last name field, the matter name field, and then by default, it always searches the notes. That's why you don't see that there. Um, but if you wanted to add maybe a new field that you want to add to your conflict of interest checks, you can click add right here, and that's going to open up this little window where you can decide, do you want to add another name field, an event field, another matter field? You know, maybe, and I have seen firms do this, you don't want to just search the last name field. Maybe you also want to search the first name field, okay? So you could add that to your list of fields to search. And notice how when I add that, it brings me to this little window that says type of search. It wants you to choose. It basically wants you to tell it, how do you want to search that field? Do you want it to do in a starts with manner? So in other words, it's going to look at the field. And if the field starts with Smith, then it's going to hit on it. Or maybe you want to do something like field contains. That works great for like hyphenated last names. Maybe the, uh, the person's last name is uh, Johnson hyphen Smith. Field contains would pick that up, okay? or any word starts with, that's another one. So you would get Smith, but it would also hit if you had uh, the last name of, um, I don't know, um, Smithson, right? It would still hit, okay? So you can kind of choose uh, how you want the system to search within that field. Usually with a name field, you're probably gonna go with either starts with or field contains. Those are pretty popular, okay? If you ever add a note category to this fields checklist, okay, like for instance, let's say I wanted to add events, okay, and I wanted to, I wanted to put in something with the note. Very rarely are you ever going to use, um, uh, let me just show you real quick, let me pull it up here under names. Very rarely would you use something like any word starts with, okay, or sound index or something like that. Um, usually, you're going to leave those to the, uh, you know, the actual field, like first name, first uh, name, last name, things like that. Okay. 
So that's how you can add additional fields to the uh, search criteria for your conflict checker by doing it there. So, and then once you have that done, just make sure you click done there on the right. That's going to add it. And then you just go about your business of typing in your name, hitting enter, clicking run, and getting your hits. Okay? And that is essentially the conflict checker. So we will go ahead and open it up to questions. Uh, Kaylee, I will let you uh, go ahead and take the reins on that if you want to just shout those out to me. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. First of all, Julia asks, how do you add email search, including to and from and text from the email to conflicts check? That is a great question. And um, the short answer to that, uh, I think it was Julie or Julia, sorry, um, you cannot, okay? However, there is a workaround, a workaround that I train people uh, on, on a kind of a hybrid way to run a conflict checker, and that is not even using the conflict of interest check feature, okay? So the short answer to your question is you can't add email fields here. However, don't forget that you have a global search feature inside of your program, okay? Should look like a little magnifying glass up on your top toolbar. If you open that, this search feature will search across pretty much every database in the system, and notice the very last checkbox it searches, emails, okay? So in theory, you could type in a name here, and if there was an email that had a hit in one of those categories, you would actually see it listed, okay? So you're kind of using the global search feature as kind of like a hybrid conflict checker. I hope that answered your question. That also works for linked docs as well. Just keep that in mind. All right. Um, Waleska, excuse me if I don't pronounce that right, she wants to know, can this feature be added to the intake form? Um, so it kind, of, it kind of is by default, and hello, Waleska. Waleska is a good friend of mine. We've worked together many times. So what you can actually do in an intake form is, and let me just open up a basic one here. We'll just do a basic client plaintiff, okay? When you're filling out an intake form, remember that you have this use existing name button right here, okay? And if you ever type in a name, let's say last name Smith, first name John, watch what happens when I tab out of this field. See how the system saw that name and it told me this name is already listed do you want to allow a new client with the same name? So if that was a, you know, if it was like an obscure name and you were like, wait a second, I've never represented this person, you know, before, what you would want to say is no here. You do not want to allow a contact with the same name. And then click this button that says use existing name. And that's going to pull up a list of all of those Smiths that you can, you could eventually, you know, look for potential uh, conflicts there. So if you happen to see, you know, there's Jennifer Smith. Yep, she's actually already in her system, and we, you know, represented her on some case, you know, back in the day. You would be able to see that there. So you don't get the full capability of the conflict checker inside of an intake form, but you definitely get that 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 duplicate checking feature will kind of lead you down the right path. Great. Lainey wants to know, in conflict check, we do not want to find the name or business in conflict check, right? So, well, I mean, I, I guess it depends on what, you're, what, you're, what angle you're looking at when it comes to the conflict check. Usually, usually, yes, the best result is you do not want to find that person in there because then that would represent a conflict of interest. So if you do find, somebody in a conflict of interest check then you know that you're looking for that you're hoping you don't find and yeah I mean that that would be you know your potential conflict of interest check so for instance you know we see conflict of interest checks all the time in divorces right that's probably the number one practice area where you find it so if I do a consultation with the wife okay 
And in, during that time, I create a name record for the wife in my system because I'm putting appointments on my calendar. Okay, And then two weeks later, the husband calls and wants me uh, to represent the husband. Well, what I would do is I would run a conflict of interest check right, for the opposing party's name just to make sure that I don't have them in there. And at that point, I would see, I've already spoken to your wife about this case. That's a conflict of interest. Or, you, know, you wouldn't be able to represent that person. Next question is from Waleska. If I always use the intake manager, can I rely solely on the information I put in the intake, or should I also run a conflict check after the intake manager? I would say to be 100%, it would probably be best to run that intake after um, you do the, uh, the, the intake form, run the conflict check after you do the intake form, or even potentially before. It might make more sense to do it before. Um, but that would be, you know, the most thorough way to do it. So I would try and work that into your, uh, you know, your, your normal intake process, you know. First I run the conflict check. Then I, you know, create the case records, you know, things like that. Great. Uh, we have one more question. I'm pretty certain that we did go over this in the presentation, but just because we have a little bit of time, um, Tammy asks, is there any way to specify the name James as a last name only when doing conflict checks? So well, you, can, you can tell the system so, uh, how you want to do it. So when you go into setup for your setup defaults here, you can add additional fields. So if I, if I only want the names that I'm typing in to only hit on the last name field, then I actually just added this here. I would delete this out, okay? So now the system's only gonna look at the last name field on a name record for that hit. So it's up to you how you wanna do that. By default, that's how it should be um, inside of your program. If you don't want it to hit on case names, you can remove that. Okay, this little line here that says matter, matter, if you delete that, it's going to remove that from the conflict check search function. And it would only at that point search within your last name field. Okay, um, Noreen asks, how do you do a conflict check on a business? Well, so the key there is going to be, um, first of all, how are you entering businesses into your system? Are you entering them in uh, using like a standard name record? Um, or are you actually, do you have like a screen that has like company name on there? Okay. If you have something like that, then again, you would need to just click set up and add that company name field right to your list. Other than that, you're just going to run it the same way. For instance, if I type in Geico, okay, and I hit enter, and I click run, no hits, okay? It's not finding anything inside of my names, okay? So you, if the data is in one of those fields, if the business name is in one of these fields here, or any field that you add, it's going to come up on your list of conflicts. Perfect. Uh, Lindsay asks, will the default search include a cross-reference under the linked names within a matter? Well, it doesn't, it's not necessarily a cross-reference. It's going to pull it up either way because it searches all three databases, names, matters, and notes. So it's going to find it, you know, either way. Um, so, I mean, you know, it, I, I don't know if I'd call it really a cross-reference. It's, it's going to pull it up on its own because just, be, just because that name is linked to a matter, that name also just exists on its own inside of the name database. So it would pull it up there. Now, if you typed in something here, let's do Jones again, and I click Run. Okay, I've obviously got Jones and Matters, and I've got Jones here, right, inside of my names list. So if I were to go to this, if I were to actually open this up, I could, you know, say, oh, Jones v. Pepsi, let me go ahead and open up that case and see how that person is linked to that matter. Maybe they're linked as a, you know, the, the, the respondent. Maybe they're, you know, who knows how they, you know, how they could be linked. All right. Lindsay says thanks. Um, Stephanie wanted to add a comment. 
She said, I just wanted to let the lady who asked about the conflicts checks while you are doing an intake form know that while you are filling out an intake sheet, you can hit the conflict tabs up top and it will open the conflicts window without closing the intake sheet form. Absolutely. That is a great point. If you're inside of an intake form, you can open that up. That's true. You can have them open at the same time. Now, I will tell you this, it does not work the other way. <laughs> I believe if you open the conflict of interest checker first, I think you actually have to close that out before you open any other window. But great point, great point, Jessica. Well, I don't see any more questions. Uh, go ahead and type in your questions now, or you can always email us any questions that you have at webinars at advocatesnext.com. I think that's going to be about it for today. Thank you, Scott. All right. Thank you, and thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next Friday. Look forward to seeing you as well.